So at the minute I've just taped her up with some wide masking tape. This outside line is basically the edge of the uh, inside of the cabinet with the lip so I can't go beyond that or near it. I've also flipped the cabinet around the other way so it will hinge from the left hand side so it's basically just turning the cabinet upside down. Top and bottom panels are identical, I've only got one anyway. And the locks just sit there where I've marked out. So I've got to just keep clear of those where they come up. We've got to keep that space clear. So we'll have the, um, they do tend to fall over because they're one-sided. Pump switches and the indicator lights, then the alarm switches, the timer and the reset button and the three PIDs with warning lights and element switch that may change because there will be enough power running through this that in theory if I wanted to do back to back I could be boiling one while I'm heating the HLT up for another brew and cleaning the mash tun out so that um, I could essentially be finishing the boil off on one brew um, and mashing in on the next so to speak <coughs> I may wind up excess frequency which I brew highly unlikely I'll do a double brew <laughs> double batch but um, excuse the dogs in the background because my son's just come back from a weekend trip so then we'll have a power on switch and a power on indicator again I'm subject to moving that we've got a combined meter here which does the volts and amps so we don't need but I'm leaving this space in case future changes that one goes wrong a different size meter has to replace it and so on um, the alarm button which obviously ties in with the timer alarm I think most of them have a red additional or some kind of indicator lamp. This does both anyway, so it seems pointless in having two flashing lights doing the same thing. Um, I'm left with a couple of spares anyway, because when I bought the blues, for some reason the blues are dearer than the rest of them. But it was cheaper to buy two from one supplier than uh, one on its own. So you can unscrew these covers, so basically it's a spare. That one was faulty, it's just bad soldering, so I can repair that one. But again, you can unscrew the little lens caps. So if any of them do fail, they're LED 240, 240 volts. So um, everything's 240 for UK voltage. So it's just a matter of playing with the layout and then marking it out so it's equal. Also, I've got to just make sure that obviously when this is flush to the door, the uh, rest of it that's going to stick into the cabinet is going to clear the frame so that when you open the door this bit doesn't foul it so it might have to come across that is pending right well we've gridded up the bottom half of the front door panel so that we can get the equal spacing for all four PIDs and timer the idea being this dotted line I have to be on the inside of that for the back to clear the inside of the cabinet so they have just fell just in line so that should clear and the idea was obviously to have a straight line down so we'll have the switch warning light at the front on the top of it pump indicator light and then the pump switch now we've got the door panel in the way a little bit. I think it is still clear, but I'm going to leave those for now and just do the four switches for the alarm circuit. And I'll mark out where the PIDs have got to be cut and then the holes for the switches and other indicator lights directly above them. I'm starting with the bottom up because I've got all that room up there to adjust anything as I go up should I have encountered something that I haven't planned for so we've marked out the position of the pump switches and the indicator lights we've pilot drilled them and then run through with an 8mm bit which is to accommodate the Qmax cutter which basically is an allen screw with a cutting head 
we just unscrew that, place that on the back, this on the front, and do it up, and it should pierce through and punch a nice neat clean hole. So let's find out if it works. Definitely a worthwhile investment. Really neat and clean. It was quite thick steel. Near enough on the limit of the cutter. Could do with a bigger wrench. That's all I could find at the time. It does restrict my uh, leverage a little bit. But you just do it up by hand and then start cranking it round. Like this. A little bit slippery on this table for gripping. First click, second click, third click, and it pulls the punch through. And I've got to say, very nice, neat, clean holes, far cleaner than you'd get with uh, one of the metal hole saws. This wasn't overly expensive; it was under ten pounds, and. Uh, yeah, for the first four holes cut, it's worth it just to save all the grief with the uh, standard type of hole saw. So that's the first four fitted. Went worryingly easy. Means something's going to go wrong further up the road. <laughs> anyway, next is to mark out where the PIDs are going to go in relation to these and the control switches underneath. We'll have one there, 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 there. So that'll be the next ones to mark out. Worst ones to cut are going to be the PID squares because I need to um, do those with a saw or a little mini disc cutter. But one step at a time. Okay, so we've marked out another line across. PIDs are just on line of the centre mark there. So we've come down between this lamp and the base. It's around about eight and a half centimetres. So rather than go there, we've gone four and a half. They look about right. So I've put that line across there. It's just a matter of marking it. So again, I've just fitted it all up just to make sure it sort of looks right because the perspective is thrown out. Because obviously you're seeing this mounting plate, which tends to throw your perspective off a little bit because obviously. All you really see is that and that. Again, if I hadn't mentioned it earlier, in line with there and there would have been a bit close and cluttered to these door lock mechanisms. So I came in one measurement each side for the pumps and indicator lights. So it's just now the roll of alarm switches to fit. Well, that's the other four cut. Went reasonably well, a little bit harder to cut through this time, whether it's the um, die heating up slightly from the friction. Did give it a little squirt of oil, but that didn't seem to help. It squeal even more, but it's done the job. Now these little uh, switches, uh, telemechanic, two part switches. You just undo the two back screws which are those there, which grip against the panel. And they just come apart like that. So all you have to do is just locate them back together. Do the two little screws up against the panel. And they're in. So there's the two screws, just those little brass ones there. And they just need tightening up equally. You can see the back plate and just keep that level by eye. Just do each one up in turn until they grip. You don't have to over tighten them and risk breaking uh, the cast collar. Grip and they'll do enough. Make sure the switch operates, no bits and burrs in there. And that's it. Zoom you back out. It's 
So there we have it. Another little section completed. All the switches are in. Just got to uh, mark out and cut those. Well, another day into it, or an afternoon, and we managed to cut the hole for the volts amps meter. And if you can see those marks there, they are the start of the cutouts for the PIDs and timer. Problem being, I was using these uh, mini cutting discs, these are the reinforced ones. The smaller ones just disintegrate on every cut. But uh, the mandrels that come with a cheap set uh, are all off. The edges aren't flat, so the uh, the discs are sitting like that in the holders. Not good for a uh, straight cut. And the other one, which I can't find now, I think it's rolled on the floor, which I was using, the uh, tiny little screw is sheared off inside it, so uh, I'm kaputting at the minute with regards to cutting, so I've just ordered some more mandrels because all of the three I've got in a set down there are crap. So, utilising the time still, I only had one spacer for the back panel. So I've managed to find my reinforced old propane gas hose. These are very nice fit. So uh, we're utilising those for the back spaces. I'm going to remove that earth cable because it's um, going to be in the way. It's monstrous. Uh, and see if we can get the back panel done. Well, I couldn't let that defeat me. I'd got the bug. And I wanted to get them cut, so I managed to file one of the little mandrels. <coughs> Good enough to uh, continue the job after about an hour mucking about trying to find something else. So we finally got the four squares cut for the PIDs. And uh, they need a little bit of fettling with a with grinding disc. One of the miniature ones, just to take a few bears and that off. You can see that. <coughs> um, and then a good old fashioned hand file, just to trim them up. So if I need to make any slight little adjustments, just to square them up, trim them with a the file. Just hoping there's a couple of them got a bit warm, so I'm hoping the paint's not damaged. If it is, it is. There's nothing I can do about it, so I'll just have to do a rough coat and give it another blow over, I was going to keep it as it is, but if I don't get away with it, so, so be it. But during my damn time as well, I got the uh, piece of aluminium for the back panel drilled out, marked off, drilled out, fits pretty good. One of the uh, bolts is slightly astray from everywhere else, but um, we managed to calculate that in, so... Ah, I needed a little bit of liquid, um... Probably for health and safety reasons to uh, wash all the dust away. Couldn't use a mask because I kept steaming my glasses up and then I couldn't see, so... <clears throat> right, let's have another little dry fit. Well, there we go. That's all the bits at present. To go in the front panel. Fortunately, everything's gone. I would say if you're going to do these, then you, probably the mini drill cutting discs aren't the best idea. They do give you a nice, sort of fairly accurate cut, but they do take some time. You can. It took me probably three times the amount of time to cut those, and that one up there is. Uh, punch the holes that made the job super easy with that hole punch I would recommend that. That's my little volts gauge and the truth my line my dotted line to clear the inside of the cabinet as you can see. Plenty of room. 
So as long as they don't fall out. There's the back view. Right. And the back panel. Good in situ, so I've got to buy myself some nuts and washers and then start the uh, plan and the layout on the back panel. Well, we move on. This is the bottom plate. Already had a hole cut in it, so we're utilising that for one of the outputs. Just duplicated it there. Again, we've taped it and marked out. Now, you're just going to set it in place for the hole punch and cut the three holes for the temperature senders. And we'll use this as a template and cut a piece of aluminium checker plate just to fill in the top panel that was missing. Okay, the best blue paint of tradition here is the one I finished. Just left a little bit of the tape on there for the gland to go in for the uh, main input cable. We've got two connections for the uh, water pump and the water pump. Heat sensors are on XLRs and two, two 40, 16 amp outlets for the HLT and boil kettle. So, finish this bit off now for now. And while we were busy with drills, also just marked out, drilled and countersunk some bolts in the back of here, mounted the heat sinks for the SSRs. Two power supplies mounted on the back border, just self tappers. And the same again for the live and neutral buses. So we've just got the um, DIN rail to fit and the relays to mount. Well, just some of the tools you need when you want to build your own electric brewery. But we have progressed somewhat from last time. If you're only watching these videos, we have managed to get everything fixed and finished. As you can see, all the tapes now off the panel, the locks for the doors are back in. Bottom panel is all finished. So we've got the uh, sensors, two power outputs for the pumps, the gland fitted for the armoured cable, and inside we're now starting all the wiring. So we've done that back panel and the heat sinks are attached and the SSR solid state relays are attached to the heat sinks. You can see the little white paste there is the thermal grease, same sort of stuff as you use uh, on your PC memories when you're upgrading your computer. And the two DC 12 volt power supplies. You can see the live neutral earths for the mains input are now in and we're just sort of at the part of routing wiring. Uh, everything's attached now. We've had a change on components. These relays uh, or contactors as they're known are now serving the purpose of the relays that I had originally purchased. Uh, we've got the uh, double pull 80 amp in comer which as you can see I've now started wiring the switching circuit so the live in through the switch and feeding down to the coil which energizes and pulls the contactor down supplying the power through to the main cables which go to the live and neutral buses that contraption there is a toroid winding that is basically acting as a sensor for the ampage the current that's going to pass through the cable so I've just got to extend the cable here through to the amp sensor on the back there the volt sensor is connected direct to the panel mains indicator which is going to be directly fed off the bars uh, distribution buses so there's no uh, sort of false reading that's the back of the key switch which the wires go through to the relay these little blocks are just a self adhesive square with a slot on each side which enables you to pass a cable tie through just for wiring attachments we've come in to feed the power supply the mains in to the SSRs and the timers 
obviously they can be looped around and come off and then they'll go back directly to the distribution point and we've got the first section of the alarm wiring the next one is obviously comes out and goes to the terminal on the back of the PIDs and then obviously the pumps although they are actually the pumps are 12 volt as opposed to 240 or 110 because um, I should be using 12 volt DC pumps so the mains is going to be switched on and off from the controls the panel indicators are again mains so they'll only come on when the energy is passed through the switch and is going to turn the power supply on so the two remaining screw terminals there will go through and down to our connection points down here so I'll run through a bit more as I progress on but this is sort of the stage we're at at the minute so we're sort of I guess halfway on the wiring um, some of it is a little bit generous at the minute because it's got to be sort of positioned down to hold it all in place the only thing was we we're pretty close to the edge of the door frame there for the connectors but I've managed to do a 180 on them and bend them in the upright position so they clear the door aperture that was the only slight problem so so far so good we've ha had the SSRs plugged in and energized uh, with the sensors on them did have a little problem with the uh, range that they were set at um, on the defaults even though they were set up for um, they come from factory with the k-type sensor settings and you have to change them to uh, PT100s and they were all sort of out of range but after sort of reading the instructions on the internet and feathering out a few things we um, sorted that out so they all read I've calibrated them roughly, they're all within sort of 0.3 of a degree of one another when they're all wired in uh, with just the temperature sensor sitting static in the bottom. So obviously we've got to rig up a wire, a three terminal post there and run them down to the XLR connectors and then obviously solder those connections and then make the plugs with the remainder of the wire. So that's what we'll update you with on the next segment.